Unheralded, Archibald has burst upon the NBA scene as the newest of the fabulous little men. Tiny's a little guy. He's about 6'1", or maybe 165 pounds. You've got to credit Tiny Archibald for that sensational pass. Archibald on a drive at the other end, beautifully done. I was in high school when I first saw Tiny play. He was playing for D. Rick Clinton up in the Bronx, and he was a winner. Growing up in New York, when you get to play in the NBA, you get to play against some of the world's greatest athletes. And then when you go back into kind of your community and play against guys, competition was fair. Watch this crossover. Yeah, I'm gonna watch crossover. <laughs> when we played, it was not for friendship. It was for blood and guts. Sometimes we played for sodas, sometimes we played for sandwiches, sometimes we played for your sneakers. The lessons Tiny learned on the streets of the Bronx helped him make an impact from the moment he stepped onto an NBA court. He was a second round pick of the Cincinnati Royals, and he was playing behind a guy named Norm Van Leer. Norm was an outstanding player, very good defender, hard nosed, very competitive guy. And his rookie year, Tiny played so well that Cincinnati traded Norm to the Chicago Bulls. And then Tiny ended up starting for them. They had a great feel for the game a lot of New York City players have. Tiny Archibald is an unguardable player in his earlier times because of his speed and his quickness. He's kind of like the Allen Iverson of his time. Not a lot of room to pass, and once again, the bounce pass. He was amazing. He was so quick. He was ambidextrous. Archibald, quick hands of Archibald. Great penetration by Tiny. Head and shoulder fakes. Vintage Nate the Skate there. And he was dynamic. He was entertaining. He played hard every night. Fearless and one of the game's great finishers. He was so competitive for a little guy. They'd knock him down, he'd get right back up. Look at Archibald penetrate. He got in the lane and he got the ball up on the backboard and he had the spin on it and it always seemed to go in the basket. Boy, if he finds an inch, he can get a field goal. That's an incredible shot there. And he just knew how to play the angles and he knew how to play the game and he knew what he needed to do to help his team win. All right. And in his third year in the league, becomes the only player in history in the NBA to lead the NBA in scoring and assists. Tiny's remarkable 34 points and 11 assists in the 72-73 season defined the do-it-all makeup of a New York City point guard. Archibald, boy, he keeps the tempo going. There's another assist to him. It shows that he is unselfish. At the same time, he could take over a game when he has to. If he gets hot, he could turn the lights out by himself. It's very seldom that a player can lead the league in scoring and also do the kind of things he did from an assist standpoint as far as getting his teammates involved, as far as running the team. If you ran, he gave you the ball. So everybody wanted to play with him because he was so unselfish. And that's why he got so many assists, because he was always passing. Just a great teammate. Just a great player to play with. After seven years in the NBA, the Bronx native followed Kuzi's footsteps to Boston. In his second straight All-Star appearance, in his fifth overall from the Boston Celtics, six foot one, Nate Tiny Archibald. He's the MVP of the 1981 All-Star game. Here's Archibald inside. Tiny put Walter Davis on it. Tiny Archibald. Tiny, you were the first among uh, your peers this afternoon, and here is this award, and I'm happy to present it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I tried to get the ball to the people that were open, penetrate as much as I could, and then disarm. Congratulations, Tiny. Thank Thanks you. Again, On a team filled with all-stars, Archibald played a key role in returning the NBA's most storied franchise to its days of championship glory. He played on some of those great Celtic teams with McHale, Parrish, and Bird, and he really knew how to run the team, and his teammates uh, had great respect for him. It's all over. The Boston Celtics have won the World Championship in 1981. I just try to pick my spots and try to keep the team going, and that's my job, Rick, not to score anymore, but keep the team going, and uh, I'm glad we just won. He just changed the game so much because it gave a lot of people hope that they could play in the NBA like the Muggsy Bowls of the world, et cetera, et cetera. And has he made a difference or what? A man of few words, he just produced on the floor. And, and that he did. He just had a great career. Archibald, remarkable play. Played the game the right way. It was so fundamentally sound. There were a lot of other guards who had more natural ability, certainly had a lot more sizzle in their game, but no one had more substance. It was all about sharing the ball, playing as a team game. Great pass. He's the guy in the modern age 
who was the quintessential New York City point guard.